So, Jonathan, it, do, do you ever, when do you say, you know what, I'm, I'm looking at this as a rational, logical person, and the market is, you know, I, I've been denying what the market is telling me, and when do you finally just say, you know what, geez, maybe, maybe there's a lot of smart people uh, that their composite of what they're all thinking is, is what you end up seeing on that little number on the bottom right, and you just say, you know what, they, I just got to defer to what they're saying, and, and I, I just can't fight this. Do you ever come to that conclusion? You know, Joe, I, when, I'm, when I'm talking to hedge fund investors and professional investors, I'm really seeing two camps. And the first camp is the guys who are saying exactly what you're saying, which is at the end of the day, the market's smarter than all of us. And the market is telling us either that this is not going to be as bad as we think getting back to normal or that the Fed has the markets back and ultimately you can't bet against that and they're, and they're in. And then there's another group who basically is saying, and, and you see this you know, with guys like Lee Cooperman and others who are, who are um, and, and Carl Icahn and, and others who are saying this, who are saying is first start by looking at the fundamentals. And if you have a recession that is you know, X times worse than normal, if you have an unemployment rate that is X times um, what, it, what, it, what it was in the last go-round, if you have the, the drawback in, in earnings, X times what it, what it was in the last recession or two. And you say, what do I think the market should be down if I calibrate that? And then you say, now, what is the market down? That disconnect doesn't make sense. Ultimately, the fundamentals have to win. And that's really the debate that's happening. And I'm seeing a, almost, a, when I'm talking to you know, hedge fund guys, an almost perfect split where half of them are in camp A and half of them are in camp well, B. Well, I don't know. The, the any, if I, I always try to figure out what the consensus is, and I know they're going to be wrong, even with Villanova versus Georgetown all those years ago. You could tell everybody betting on one or the other, and it, and it works in sports, it works here. If you don't think people have a worst-case scenario baked into the cake for what we've seen after the past six weeks, Jonathan, I mean, there are people that think we will never return to sitting in a restaurant next to each other without masks and without eight feet. We, there are people that are postulating that this is the end of life as we know it. It will never be the same again. And you don't think that people have, have factored in the worst case scenario? And, well, and no, I mean, you know, so first, you know, that argument, which is that we're never getting back to normal. Well, what are you saying? That, okay, we're, this, no, you're, you're saying good. the recession is going to be so much. Who doesn't think this is going to be the worst recession ever when we've heard it's going to be worse than the Depression? Who doesn't already well, I don't have know that? It's be worse depression, but we do know that if you were to if you were to mark to market the unemployment rate right now, we would be I don't know fifteen percent, seventeen percent. Right, you know, right. Because more. we shut. What do you expect when you shut Joe, down the I'll economy? I'll tell you for sure, a hundred percent. I'll tell you who ahead, doesn't Mike. think so. What? What, Mike? Who doesn't think so is analysts who are no, projecting. Twenty twenty one earnings right. of one hundred and seventy three dollars for the S and P, which is higher than last year. So I don't. I think that it's very hard to say everybody is doomsday okay. right now. <laughs> Um, I, I think it is fair to say there's been uh, a reserve of caution that has gotten burned off only very slowly right. in the last few weeks as the market has done I well. Think if we uh, had... I would also say, yes, the market's smarter, but the market was exactly at yesterday's closing level, you know, two years and three months ago. So it doesn't mean it's always right. going in the direction it went yesterday. But was the economy, seeing that it was in pretty good shape, you know, I don't know if it was the greatest economy in the history of the world, which we hear at the task force every night, but it was in pretty good shape. And if it wasn't thrown off by, by higher interest rates or overheating or, you know, the normal cause of, of a business cycle, if that's not what caused it, then, then how do you know that it's, it's not something that, uh, you know, that, that was artificially moved down and can, you know, bounce back? It's, it's the V versus you. The catalyst you. was it's artificial. The, it's the V versus you. Um, argument. And, and I don't know what it, Some stocks are looking like V's, some are looking like L's. So I don't know. That's right. Okay. And by uh, the way, you've also, it, it's a credit cycle. Right now, it's the credit cycle. How much that deteriorates from the Fed and everything is else. a big so, piece but, of it. You know, just the Fed, when the Fed supports the market, you also got to realize that, that they're trying to support the underlying economy as well and the wealth effect and everything else like they did in 2008. So it's yeah, not I just and I don't think the Fed. I don't think the Fed is looking to support the stock market here. They're looking to right. make sure that there's enough liquidity sloshing around that that you know the so things they flow, people can raise capital, and the market is is going up. 
you know, in, uh, you know, in response to that. But they're also, and this has to be something when you, when you think about the value right. of the stock market, there, there's somebody who's paying for this on the other end. I mean, we I mean could... the amount of money that, that's being printed, um, and, and that's going to either have to continue to be financed well, that's or taxes another word. are going to that, go up on the other word. end. And ultimately, that does affect the value of stocks over the long right. run. Right, and that's another worry, obviously. We could go down. This could be like the, like what happened back in the 30s, where this was the first break. We have a 50% or whatever retracement. We could, who knows? The, the, the Dow could go to 12,000. That's always possible. And I think Andrew thinks we're headed there. Anyway, go ahead, Andrew. Well, I don't think we're headed there, Joe, but what, the, the, the only addition I wanted to make to the conversation well, where is... Where do you think we're it's headed, very Andrew, possible you're right always, now everybody's, Where do you think we're headed? Because you're always... You, I mean, you haven't... See, you didn't see this rebound, obviously, but where do you think we're headed? Because you've been pretty negative all along. Where do you think, I think we're, we're I think we're ultimately going to be... I think for, for some period of time, we, we may be headed up, and I imagine we will therefore be headed down. And the reason I say that, though, is, you know, as everybody reopens... Everyone's very excited. I talk to analysts, hedge fund managers, investors. They're well, all we very know excited about everybody. reopening. We know. We the know. Thing that's tell not, us that. Go ahead. Joe. Go ahead. All right. The thing, the thing that's being complicated here is you can reopen, but as we've discussed so many times, reopening may ultimately turn into closing. So as we've talked about, whether you're a department store reopening, great. If you're social distancing and nobody wants to touch the, mer the, the, the merchandise, then they're going to close. The restaurants may open. They may hire some people, but they may still close right. later because they can't make a go of the business. And so there's going to be this sort of two-step process. And the, the second step, I would argue, is not being factored into the conversation enough because you're going to, you, might be, you might actually get a nice little surge for the next couple of months as people do. By default, they're going to have to hire, rehire people. So you're going to see less unemployment. But then you've got to tell me whether you think those businesses can actually succeed the way they used to succeed before. Right. I'm hoping for the day where we hear about a COVID case and we say, oh, my God, there is a, a, a COVID case and it's a rare thing. And, you know, I'm, I'm hoping those days come. If they don't, then I don't know. Then, then all of our lives, uh, all of our lives are going to be different, permanent.